Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode on X4 Kingdom's End, the beta edition, where we're going to be checking out the shark, the biggest carrier that they have in game. We're going to have a closer look at it, plus some information on it. So if you don't want any spoilers, then unfortunately this video is not for you. However, if you do and you want to check it out, then make sure you stay tuned and watch the video in its entirety. And I appreciate it if you give it a thumbs up as well, if you do enjoy it. Right, without further ado, let's talk about this. Now, somebody commented on my video showing all of the ships that I needed to have a look at the docking of smaller ships. Now, I think I made a comment on the lines of that basically the ships dock here on these on the inside. So I thought I'd take the advice and have a look at it. And I was pleasantly surprised. Because we're going to do it right now so you can see the new docking procedure that comes with this ship. This is also the first time I've actually flown one of these ships, so I'm actually seeing the engines for the first time as well. Docking granted. So, usual docking procedure. So let's go ahead and, as you notice, we're not being told to go to the docking platform. So let's line ourselves up. As easy as it is in third-person mode. External view, and it slides us into the docking bay. Successfully docked. That is pretty sweet. Same thing happens in reverse when you undock. It pushes you out to the side of the ship, and you're then released. And for some reason, I don't know whether it's designed that way, but I seem to go in reverse every time I seem to undock. Maybe it's designed that way. But this is the shark, and you can just see the scale of the ship when you're actually flying in a small vessel. We're in the uh, randomly named ship that I hate to try and pronounce. Um, I can't even remember how to pronounce it. That's how bad I am. You'll have to ignore this is uh, obviously the beta, so I can see a lot more in it. But we are currently in the Urukanji. I, if I butchered that, I apologize. But you can just see the scale of this carrier when you start flying around it. The engines look massive. We're going to get on board and we're going to have a little fly of it in external view so we can see what it looks like. But look at this. We're getting a good view from our ship. And then we'll get a good view using our little streaming mode that we have in game now. But you can see just the scale of the docking platforms. And we're going to see these docking platforms in action. Because what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to um, load them up with as many ships as I can. How many have we got in here? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So we can launch 16 ships in one go. We'll obviously look at a little bit more detail on what they can carry when we get closer. You'll also notice that on top of this, they've got these little drums here. Now, notoriously with the boron stuff, these barrels um, contain liquid which we also know they require water, so it does make sense, which I really like the small bits of detail like that. The borons require water, so they've put liquid holding capsules. It doesn't actually make any effect to us. We don't need to keep the maintenance of water on board, but it's nice to have that little bit of detail. You're going to see we've got the um, little antennae, little radar dishes, and then we've got the bridge section here as well, and again, you can just see the scale of it. It looks absolutely immense. In externally, I think they've done a fantastic job on these ships. And then we've got the large, larger docking platforms on the medium ships behind here. And again, I haven't tested what they what they dock like, but I can't see the little blue icon that I saw on the other docks. So that may be because I'm obviously flying a smaller ship. But I think these may just be standard docks where they come in and dock on top because there's no risk of hitting anything here whereas obviously for a smaller ship if you're coming in at high velocity and you want to try and dock last thing you want to do is hit this top canopy here so instead of making you trying to come in and obviously you've got all of these vital ship exterior systems and you don't want to go smash into the side of the hull and putting the hole in it they have it where you come to the edge here and it docks you for you Obviously, I can't at the moment because I've got no docking. docking. If we do that, brings us in nice and safe. 
successfully done. Okay, without further ado, let's get on board the ship. Let's have a look a little bit more internally, and then we'll take a flight of the ship and see what it looks like. And we'll also have a look at the launching of other ships. Okay, so we are now on board, and as I've shown in the previous video, this has got a two-system door. Um, this is probably because maybe potentially the ships used to be flooded with water so that they could leave their exos exosuits and they can obviously walk around well sorry swim around their own ships and obviously now that they're trying to interact with people who require oxygen rather than water they've then decided to release the water and start to live in these exosuits you'll see here that this is uh, the internals going up to the bridge most of the corridors kind of look like this um, and a couple of people have commented that they think that the internals are a little bit lacking. I'm thinking functionality on the part of the Borons. Design-wise, yeah, it's... The, the externals look amazing. The internals look a little bit barren. But, again, maybe down to functionality. So this is the bridge of the shark, and we've got some, like, connection port things around and cabling and all sorts we've got a little bit of blinking lights and i'm trying to obviously not throw my camera around so that i don't make you all sick but you can just see here these are the lower bridge decks so you've got four consoles in the lower section and you've got your main bridge console up here as well you've also got another console on either side of the main bridge console so you've got seven consoles in total obviously with the newer systems you can obviously go on board one of these consoles, sit on there using your seater drive, or you can access the map and allow the captain to continue flying the ship unless you take control of navigation. Which we're going to take control of the entire ship right now, so we get a little bit more of a, a view of the ship. And as you can see, I seem to go straight into reverse straight away. But let's have a look at the external view. Let's get in a little bit closer if we can. That's me trying to fly. Okay, so I think that might be as close as we're going to get. Oh, yeah, I can go, get a little bit closer here. I want to just show off these engines. There we go. So if I start powering forward, you see the engines are starting to come to life. So we've got, rather than one big, massive thruster, um, massive engine, I should say, thrusters are separate, we've got these smaller ones here, which look pretty sweet. The colours look really nice as well. This is the cobalt colour scheme I've got. And then obviously as we engage the speed, you can see the lights flare up until we have maximum speed, which we're at now. And you can see them blazing away there. That looks pretty sweet. That's a very nice looking ship. From this angle here, it looks amazing. That angle there also looks absolutely amazing. So that is the shark externally let's get a good look at it we'll have a proper look with the um the kind of panoramic view uh, later down the line once we've finished looking at some more details on it okay right so let's let's bring the ship down to a slow i think we're stopped pretty sure we're stopped okay so to reiterate, we have, from this angle here, might be better, we've got the docking platforms here for our small ships and the larger ones in the rear. We've also got shield systems and stuff like that to have a look into. But this is what we're going to expect is to see ships jumping out from here and then launching off. And we'll show that shortly when I get the other ships over. But let's have a look at the actual ship in terms of what it can actually do. So let's head on over to our encyclopedia. Let's go to our ships, combat vessels, carriers and destroyers, and then we want to find the shark. Okay, so the max hull integrity. We can actually compare this, um, if I remember how to compare it. Uh, we may need to compare it from a different... Uh, I could be wrong. It's been a while. We do have comparison. We'll have a look at the comparison at a later stage. I think it might be. Ah, there we go. I remembered. It's been a while. Ship comparisons. So we'll go for the shark. We'll go for a high preset loadout. We'll double check and make sure it is all boron technology. Boron shields. 
more on turret groups. This is supposed to be the high preset, so we'll we'll hopefully allow it to have the best systems. Make sure it's got targeting computers, everything. We'll confirm that. And then let's throw in the Asgard. Because we like the Asgard. We also notice the Asgard do not have access to the Boron technology. They must just have their own shields, their own weapon systems, its own turret systems. I also believe, nope, they do not get access to the Boron turret systems as well. Uh, we're using the beam turrets, which obviously we know is a ridiculously powerful beam turret. But we'll go ahead and add that in there. Okay, so we get a good comparison here. So, hull straight off the bat. This has a larger hull capacity. Now, remember the Asgard is a combat vessel. So, let's have a look and see what carriers we can throw in here. Um, carrier, 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 carrier. Which carrier should we go for? We'll go for... We'll go for the Raptor. High presets. We'll make sure it's got the same... I don't know if this makes any difference in our comparisons, but we'll add it anyway, just in case. Okay. So, we've got a combat vessel and we've got a carrier vessel comparisons to the asgard which is our favorite ship less hull less shields slightly higher recharge rate but the re the group shields the average uh, shield of the engines and turret systems as it says there is slightly higher it's considerably higher sorry in the asgard and again the recharge rate for all of your components is higher Burst damage, we don't have any burst damage on the carrier because obviously the burst damage is its main cannon. So that's ir irrespective for us. However, our average turret output is higher. It's higher on both, uh, which we'll have a look at this one in a minute anyway. Speed, considerably faster, has higher acceleration, has higher boost speed, has higher travel speed. Nearly, actually it's more than double travel speed. Strafe speed and strafe acceleration is higher on the Asgard. And again, your pitch and roll, it defeats the Asgard every time. It's also got higher container storage, which I would probably expect because um, it's a carrier. After all, it needs to carry supplies. However, what is surprising is when we look at the other carrier in a minute. Number of docks, irrespective uh, of, the, of that for the Asgard, really, because it, it, the Asgard is its own uh, firepower capabilities rather than requiring other ships. But whilst we've got it, we'll have a look. It's got four medium docks and 16 small docks, which is pretty accurate to what we've seen physically. It can carry eight medium ships, so that's four on the deck and four in storage. It can carry 64 ships. So it can carry quite a considerable amount internally. And then it has 16 on the deck. Please halt. Please I, I, actually, I could actually be wrong... Because it's been that long since I've looked at it and I never noticed. That could, could probably... I'm, I'm, I'm actually pretty certain I'm wrong about that. It may be eight internally and then four on the deck. Crew, 407 crew, higher crew capacity, higher units. Uh, not as many missiles, nowhere near as many missiles, which is pretty accurate considering we don't want to really put it into a combat capability. However, it can defend itself with 500 missiles. And then deployables and countermeasures are the same. Let's move it on over to the Raptor. So let's remove our Asgard so we can go with a direct comparison to the Raptor. The Raptor is considerably heavier in armor. However, shields, it is considerably less. It is a uh, hell of a less. Uh, so it's going to take a lot to bash through the shields on the Shark. And then you've still got a considerable amount of hull damage to get through. Whereas Raptor obviously relies on its hull damage straight off the bat. Recharge rate, so your shields are going to recharge a hell of a lot faster than they are on the Raptor as well. So not only have you got to try and get through them, but if you don't contain enough firepower or sustained firepower, it's going to outbeat you on the recharge rate. Um, however, it is weaker when it comes to components. So if you could take out its engines or its shield capacities, uh, capacitors, or it could take out its turret groups, the shield groups on there are far less than they, what they are on the Raptor, and it also, the Raptor also has a higher recharge rate. And the delay on the Raptor is longer, so it actually will go quicker. It'll start recharging quicker, but not as fast to recharge. Radar's standard. Burst weapons, again, we don't expect either of these ships to get into a combat situation. It's going to be defending itself while it's trying to get out of range. 
Average turret output, it's slightly higher, which is nice for the shark. Obviously, that will be dependent on what turrets you use. However, this is supposed to be a high preset, so I'd expect it to be the highest it can be. However, we all know that's not the case sometimes. Speed, we are faster, we are more accelerating, and we are also faster at boosting, and we've got double the travel speed plus a little teeny bit extra. We are also not as fast at strafing and not as fast at the strafe acceleration, which is the side to side. So point us in the direction and we're going to go blasting. Your pitch and roll, we can actually your pitch and roll a lot faster as well in this ship, which is nice, which means we can get to that pointing much faster and then launch the thing and forget about it. Container storage, again, it's high container storage, which we could put down to potentially that they've, if you imagine they may have... Um, containers full of uh, liquid and stuff like that so they have higher container storage maybe um i don't know it depends how you want to look at it but it does have it maybe the ship is technically bigger number of docks so we have one medium dock on our raptor so we can launch four times the sp sorry yeah four times the speed of ships so every for every one ship the raptor can launch in a medium ship we can launch four which is nice because our medium ships are going to pack a punch and can take down the smaller ships much easier as well However, the Raptor has 21 small dogs, which is rows of threes. If you remember, the rows of threes in the Raptor are internally, and they launch through the center of it. It looks smart as hell. I loved it. Um, it can also contain much more in the terms of medium ships. So even though it can only launch one, it can store 30 internally. And small ships, it can carry 100 as well. It is obviously one of the biggest ships to carry in terms of ship capacity. Now, that may also equate to why it only has 19,000 meters cubed in terms of container storage because more of it is for the ships however still considerable amounts of firepower in both of them there we can get away medium ships much faster which means we can have higher defense potentially slightly lower crew and slightly lower missiles which is interesting so we do have a higher missile capacity which in terms of long arduous fights can come in at a bit of a clutch However, the likelihood is you're probably going to be dead before you can get all your 500 missiles off. But who knows? So that's the two ships looking side to side. And obviously adding the Asgard in there as a little bit of a comparison as well. Obviously the Asgard, again, is not designed to be carrying ships. However, it is one of the biggest ships that the Terrans have, which is nice to see the comparison. So on paper, it looks fast. And it looks like it can contain itself for quite some time to get off its ships as quick as possible. We can go down the route of looking at all of the um, carriers because obviously I picked the Raptor, which is a lovely carrier. But if we have a look at the Tokyo, again, do the same thing. High preset the Tokyo. Make sure it's got everything on board. We can have a look at the comparisons, but as you can see, there's a lot of red there straight off the bat. Again... The Tokyo has far less in terms of small ships, but it can carry more medium ships, but it can't launch them as quick. And again, lower crew, lower missile capacity, lower shields, lower hull, and the recharge rate is, even though it's higher than the Raptor, it is still much lower than our Shark. So you can see there at a glance that it's standing its ground in its field of carriers. Considering that the Borons don't have a capital ship per se, and this would be your capital ship, it stands to reason it's going to take a battering because it's, it could potentially be one of your flagships. So that's them on paper. All that's left really is for us to see the launching of small ships and also to have a look. Uh, uh, to also shoot everybody who keeps scanning ships. Um, okay, it took it quite literal. Uh, last thing for us to see launching ships and then to have a nice little bit of an external panoramic view so without further ado let's get straight into that okay so i've got some discoverer vanguards on board my carrier you see they're all there they aren't slightly highlighted on a couple of them but they're occupying most of the bays there is one or two bays that are empty i'm not quite sure why they're empty but there you go but what we're going to do now is we're going to issue the vanguards an order and we're going to hopefully see them launch if I'm quick enough to um, actually see them physically launch. So let's give them a... Join position defense. 
we'll see. They side launch. And off they go. I would say if all of them were completely full, like that, you'd see they'd all launch at once. So they slide clean off, and off they go. That's some rapid deployment right there. I think that's one of the fastest deployments of ships that I've seen so far. Because obviously, if you look at the Raptor, they, they kind of go in three. So they'll launch three, launch three, launch three. So they all start to come out like that. Whereas that, that was fast. What was also fast as well was how fast it came out of the internal storage. So thank you to those who did comment that the um, launching of the ships were slightly different than on most of the vessels. It's pretty cool. So there you go. So that is the shark. It's pretty smart. It's pretty aptly named. It is a predator. There is no denying that. Um, with its capacity, with its damage capabilities with turrets, it's fairly decent. But with the fact that it can take a pound in and deploy its load of ships out there ready to launch uh, at a moment's notice and take on the enemy, yeah, I think I think this is a great ship. So there you go. That's a nice angle of the ship. Hopefully you've enjoyed checking the ship out. I do apologize that the uh, AI decide to talk over the top of me, but they haven't learned yet how to um, just die and not talk over the top of me. Um, but yeah, hopefully you've enjoyed looking at this ship. I love the fact that it looks like it's got a reflection of water on the hull. It looks proper smart. But I'm going to leave you now for the next minute or so without my talking, just on a bit of a panoramic view so you can enjoy the look of the ship and hopefully... You, um, you're looking forward to pl playing Kingdom's End and getting your own ship for yourself. So, without further ado, let's get into that, and I shall leave you all there. Remember, if you have any comments or questions or anything like that, make sure you do leave them in the comment section. I do check them out, and I do try and reply to most people where I can. And if you've got any suggestions or anything you want to check out more about Kingdom's End before it releases, or even after it's released and you haven't had a chance to get the game yourself yet then please do ask away. I do try and get through as much as I can. But until further notice, everybody, or until next time, take care for now, and I shall see you all on the next one. Bye-bye for now.